Hi, this is Melissa with A Crave Journey with Melissa, and today I'm going to show you what I love to do, and that's coloring. Um, there are tons and tons of different ways you can color. You can use ink pads with water, which is like watercolor. You can use, you know, the old-fashioned um, little watercolor palettes that you get for kids that are in school, like grade school, kindergarten, whatever. Um, there's all different kinds of ways. I like to color with uh, alcohol markers. Um, I have Copic markers, which are another brand of alcohol markers, which are a little bit higher end. Um, I don't know if they're higher end as far as quality, but higher end as far as expense. <laughs> In my experience, I, I don't know. Um, but I do use chameleon pens, um, and I love them. And one of the reasons why I love them is because they're really versatile, and you can get a multiple... Uh, shading with just one pen and that's really huge for me because I like cost effectiveness and as you know I've said this before the stamp sets that I create I try to use and create for multiple reasons um, obviously with alphabets here you would be able to use those for multiple reasons but in addition to that I try to use or try to create any stamp set that we have for multiple reasons so you're not just using them for one and so that you can try to get more bang for your buck if you will so with that today I'm going to show you um, how I color with the chameleon pens and the giveaway is going to be a set of five chameleon pens. Um, there are a number of different chameleon pens that you can get now. There's additional colors that I don't have yet but I'm going to save up for them or I'm saving up for them so I can get them and also um, there's other ink cartridges you can get that have dual colors in them, all different kinds of things like that. But what I want to focus on today is if you're if you have a budget like I do, um, although those ink cartridges combinations are fantastic. Um, not everybody can afford to do extra things like that. So I'm going to show you how you can create your own um, dual coloring with uh, letters. So I thought that would be fun. So anyway, what we have here is we have the um, Chameleon Pen 5 Pen Pastel Tone Set, and that's going to be the giveaway for this week. We have Y03 and PK3. These are the ones that I'm going to be using for this awesome coloring. Okay. And then we have our amazing and fantastic Everyday Alphabet, excuse me, Everyday Alphabet Upper in Symbols Large Stamp Set. So this is an awesome stamp set that is really great for uh, pages, for scrapbooks, headers, all kinds of different things if you want to create something. Um, if you want to color different letters, you can cut them out if you have a brother scan and cut or a lot of the other uh, electronic die cut machines do it as well. Um, but this beauty, little this little beauty right here is one of my favorites and one of my go-to stamp sets. Again, it's the Everyday Alphabet Upper Case and Symbols Large Stamp Set. So I hope that you enjoy this. This is the outline version. And we also have already pre-stamped um, out spring. I just figured you weren't going to want to watch me... Um, stamp because I clearly can't talk today so that's one of the reasons <laughs> so it's going to be longer as that but I figured you would enjoy me coloring and showing you that more than showing you how to stamp because I figured you probably already know how to do that if you don't know how to stamp already we have if you go into our frequently asked questions which is on our website at www.acreativejourneywithmelissa.com or www.acjwm.com on our frequently asked questions you can find um, at the top there is a video on you have, you know, clear stamps, now what? So it basically shows you how to use them. I love these photopolymer stamp sets. I love the fact that you can see right through them and put them wherever you want. You could even, if you wanted to, um, stamp on top of a picture, if that was something you wanted to do, just make sure you use archival ink, and it's just fantastic. So that is what we're going to be doing, is coloring those fantastic letters that we have. And if you're interested in all our other stamp sets, make sure you check us out at www.acreativejourneywithmelissa.com or www.acjwm.com. We have a lot of stamps and all kinds of other cool things, awesome things coming later this year. And also, not only that, we have phenomenal coffee stamps, phenomenal sign language stamps, and awareness ribbon stamps, including breast cancer awareness. Basically, we have um, generic awareness stamp sets that are great for any awareness cause. We have autism awareness, um, cancer awareness, all different kinds of stamps that I think you will really love to create with if you are unfortunately affected by a situation that causes an awareness uh, uh, 
creation that you want to create. So if we want to bring awareness to a situation that's happening, we want to look at it a positive way. And that's the best way to do it is show it in our creativity and share our stories. So with that, I'm going to share my coloring story today. So we're going to start with a lighter color, which is actually the orange. I know that sounds strange, but it really is. The pink is a little bit brighter and harder to manage um, with a uh, the other color, so I think it'll be easier to do it this way. If not, we'll switch it up when I do it the other way. So what I'm gonna do is, actually, I'm going to use the brush nib. This is the brush nib, okay? That right there. So we're just gonna flick a lot. We're gonna do a little bit of flicking. So you just kinda do like something like this. So we're gonna just flick like that, and flick a little bit like that, and we're gonna color in the top part just with a little flick. So I'm gonna show you that. It may bleed outside a little bit. I'm not doing it super precise or fancy, but I do want to show you that I just flicked that little color a little bit. And then we're going to use the pink, and we're also going to use the brush side again. I like to do it a certain way, so I'm going to flip it upside down. I know that's probably silly. Oops. Actually, I'm not going to flip it upside down. I'm going to flip it up like that. Flick it up like that. See how bright that is? And then we're going to flick it up a little bit more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the yellow is actually a little bit brighter than I thought it was. So, or darker. So I'm going to use my pink as a blending color and just color right over it. And that really makes it look kind of cool and blended more. And I'll show it to you in just a second here. And then we're going to do this just a little bit just a little bit of flicking right here. Just so we have a little bit of, there, okay. And then we're gonna turn it around again and do a little bit more flicking. Again, this is not perfect. This is just to kind of give you an idea that you can get a lot of different blended colors with the markers you may have already. This is actually a really poor example of it, but I'm gonna share it with you anyway because I really went outside of the lines, but you can see there where it really does blend. It doesn't look like the colors should blend, but they do, so it's kind of neat. So it does look um, like it's a blended pink kind of color. So I'm gonna do another example on the eye, which I think will be a little bit better. I'm gonna start with the pink this time, so maybe that's actually a better choice. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and just flick up a little bit there. And it looks like that. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to flick up here to the pink. Like that. And then I'm going to use the pink flicked up again to blend it up. And that will give kind of a nice clean blending look. Again, I'm not doing it perfect. I would be much, much, much more precise and slow if I did it so that you could see so there was no lines around there. Okay, pretty cool, huh? I like the way that works. So what I'm gonna show you here is the end. I'm gonna do a little bit more precise so you can see what I'm talking about. Oops. So I'm just merely flicking up a little bit. Almost looks like little flames, it's kind of neat. I'm gonna try to be, again, a little bit more precise with my coloring. No promises. Because <laughs> I can see a little bit on my end, I've already messed it up a little bit, but that's okay. Because we all make mistakes, don't we? Yes, we do. It's kind of neat though, whoops, it's upside down, sorry. It's kind of neat, ah! <laughs> dropping. It's kind of neat though how that looks, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just color the rest of them. And show you another way you can blend them, which for people that have just started with markers might actually be better for them. They might enjoy it a little bit more. So I'm just lightly coloring it in with the brush tip, with the brush nib, like so. 
and then we're going to do the G as well. Okay, so we're all colored there. Looks good. And now we're going to bring in our gold and try to make that look a little bit... See, this one's really full of liquid, which is probably part of my issue here. Yep, that's my problem. Look at how much ink I have on this. I think I overfilled it. What do you think? I think I did. So you know what? I'm going to quickly just stamp some letters, some just various letters here. And I'm going to show you um, what it should look like, because it's not really working as best as I thought and what I had practiced before. But, you know, that happens. So I'm going to just do a bunch of eyes and just repeatly, repeatedly um, stamp them so I can show you what I mean by doing the various color blending. I now know that I have way too much ink in my, which one is it? The YO3. So I apologize. I didn't think I had put that much in, but clearly I did. I wonder if I did it twice. That sometimes has happened to me before. Isn't that fun when you're trying to be, you know, productive and put some colors into your markers and make sure you're all filled and ready to go? And what do you do? Yep. Yeah, you overfill it. Yeah, Murphy's Law. But the good news is you get to see what I do. So make sure, the one lesson we learned, make sure that your markers aren't overfilled. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use this gray, okay? So I'm going to use the gray and the pink. I think that might come out really cool, but it might be a little bit too dark. So with that, I'm going to try it anyway, because I'm a rebel. So let's see here. I'm just going to do a few of these. Okay. So I'm going to show you a close-up of what I just did. I just quickly flick colored them. You see that? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them upside down and show you how we can blend these babies together and how cool it looks. Yeah, that looks good. I like that better. That's probably a better pairing, I think. And you can see more of the blend of the color. Kind of makes it... Uh, kind of flow into one. It's kind of neat. I like how it turned out. And hopefully you will too. Um, the color is a little bit saturated, but that's because I super colored it super quick. Usually I would take a little bit in between to color those um, letters so that they don't get super saturated and want to bleed out. Um, I did not use a super expensive paper for this. Um, because I knew that I was just doing a sample and I was going to be doing it quickly. But I do want to show you something else that's kind of neat, too. So if you want to just write, say, spring, we're just going to do the S here. And then we can take this. And do the rest of the S here. You just color it in just a little bit. And just highlight it a little bit. A little bit of flicking motion there. Gives you a little bit of the blend. Looks good. Kind of neat. So let me flick, change this a little bit. But this just shows you different things you can do with your markers. I realize that not everybody wants to do this. I realize that some people are much better than I am, I promise you, and that's okay. But this is kind of right here, the example of what I was trying to show you and how you can blend two totally different colors together and how they really do look neat and how they do look like they blend and it's pretty neat. So hopefully you will have enjoyed my creation and you will have enjoyed my tutorial, even though that one didn't quite look the way I wanted it to. But you know what? Mistakes happen. It's all good, right? It did quite, it did bleed quite a bit. But like I said, look at the, look at the pink. The pink looks pretty good. That yellow not so much. You know why? Way too overfull. And I noticed it. Look at all that extra ink on my, before my nib even. There's tons of ink there, so we're going to have to empty that out somehow. I'll have to figure that out. That'll be a nice little trick. So anyway, um, if I could, I would, but I can't just show you the good part. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoy coloring. And even if it looks like this, 
please, oopsie, this. Color anyway, because at some point you'll get better. But I really do like the way the pink and the, the gray blended together. I thought that was pretty cool. So remember, practice, practice, practice. And also remember that it's important that even if you do make mistakes, even if it's not exactly perfect or the way you want it to be, that's okay. Why? Because it's art. Art is always good. So I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope you have a fantastic week, and I really super duper appreciate you coming to spend this time with me. I know that you have time to spend with your families, and you took your time to spend it with me here, so it is greatly appreciated, and I super duper hope that you enjoy your week and make sure that you Hug the ones you love because it's really important because you never know how much time you have left with them, okay? So thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for going on a creative journey with Melissa. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.